Well, I think large organizations that ask you to focus on very narrow tasks and they sort of the cult of specialization, that's which is what Heinlein is getting at. Heinlein's interested in what makes a human being, not what makes an efficient machine. So he wants he's seeking for the broadest possible, you know, sort of approach to life, because that makes you a full a man in full, as you know, as, as the saying goes. And that's and it's an it's, a, it's exhilarating. And there is a kind it's like learning languages and I'm not terribly good at languages, so this is what I've been told. <laughs> but when you've learned one, it's easier to learn the second, and then the third, and the fourth. Same thing's true with the trades. Now, I, I have a little bit of background in that. But when you have mastered one, or at least are competent in one, you're less intimidated to try the next thing, and then so forth. So a lot of, the, a lot of guys I've known in the past uh, who, um, you know, are good with their hands are good with many different kinds of things. They may not be a master, you know, the jack of all trades, master of none kind of thing. But um, but what Heinlein does that's fascinating is he takes it out beyond even manual competencies to other kinds of competencies. And I I'm a believer that that particularly Christian young men, and this is true for girls, women too. But uh, I I try to stress it with the young guys I talk to. You really ought to be able to uh, work with your hands and, you know, write an essay or write a song. In other words, the two things that seem to be unrelated to each other. You know, uh, you know King David could kill you or sing to you. <laughs> that kind of thing, you know. And like my second son, well, both my sons are like this. My daughter's is like this as well. But... All of my kids are like that. They've got, a, they've got a facility with their hands, but also with an artistic bent. So like my son is a, is an, a steel worker. And he operates a 600-ton press. It's 15 feet tall. It's like, it's massive, 60 feet long. <laughs> Just this an enormous thing. It's very building, you know, he, he helps to uh, fabricate uh, steel that goes into buildings. So... Uh, but he, he was, you know, he, in his backpack, he'll put Moby Dick for lunch. You know, <laughs> he'll read that. He's probably the only guy who's reading Moby Dick at lunch at the... At the Steelworks. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but, you know, he's, he does that on his own. He's, he's, just, he's just that way. Would you, would you say, um, so, for example, the, the Heinlein quote makes you think of not only a Renaissance man in the academic sense, but more practical, hands-on, omnicompetence. Right. Um, but just that name, Renaissance, back in the Renaissance, it was still possible for someone to read everything in the library. Right, right. Yeah. So, you know, they, if you were a good reader, you could, you could read the whole library. And now, um, you couldn't even read all the books that are published in the course of one year. Yeah, or one you know, week, maybe. Right. But I think that there's been a sleight of hand on this, because what happened is we think, well, the only thing we can do now is specialize. Yeah. Right? Because once we can't touch every single base, the only thing we can do is go with the insects and, and become, I'm the guy who stamps this widget at this point in the, in the, on the conveyor belt. But one of the things we've been striving to do at, at New St. Andrews as we're, as we're laboring to recover a liberal arts education is we, we have to constantly fight the notion that liberal arts education is vocational training for English teachers. <laughs> God, I know what you mean. Right? So it's not a major. So our, our degree in liberal arts and culture is not a major. It's not a major, we keep saying. It's, you know, we're not, this is not vocational training. And there's a, there's a, compl there's a complication here because for Aristotle, vocational training was what you gave slaves. Right. Right. Uh, you want someone to make shoes, you teach a slave to make shoes, and that's what he does. And you want someone to make your barrels, you teach a slave to make barrels. Um, and the, a liberal arts education was for the free man, you know, right? Uh, now, I, the, the wrinkle or the, the in, in the aftermath of the Protestant Reformation, one of the things that the Protestants recovered and exalted was the doctrine of work vocational calling as a calling from god right right and so that we we don't despise the barrel making and the shoe making and so forth so but then you take aristotle's insight and discount the parts that he, he got wrong and then say 
liberal arts education is the education of a free man. It's, it, that's well. A free man is an anti-fragile man. A, a free man is a man who um, can, in a pinch, could figure out how to make a shoe, right? And it's not because he's read everything in the library and he already knew, but it's when he comes up sh comes up against an obstacle, he knows how to think, and he knows how to find a solution if he doesn't have one now because he's got that. Latitude. He's got that latitude, which is what a liberal arts education does.